How are you doing? And welcome to the rugbyleaguecoach.com.au analysis for Queensland League scene. My name is Lee Addison. And for the first time ever, I've been doing this for about a year and a half now, I'm going to analyse the same team for the second week running. And that was the PNG Hunters. Last week, I looked at their defence and I was somewhat concerned, as you probably got from the analysis last week, that they were just not didn't have enough control in their defensive line, were jumping off the opposition too quick, flying out the line. So once I saw the result this week, I was intrigued, I was happy that they won a game this week at home against Mackay Cutters, and the scoreline was quite low. I think it was 18-10, so I decided to look at them again. But this week, I'm going to look at the offensive side of the ball predominantly. So I'll share the screen, and, and I'm going to tell you the story of, of the process I went through looking at this tape. So despite wanting to look at defense, uh, sorry, at offense, I thought I'd have a look at the defense first. And this is one of the early sets in the game. And already I am seeing a lot more in terms of control. So I'm only going to show you one defensive set today. But what you've got here, you'll see it in a moment. You'll see that this defensive line actually becomes a line. The markers hold and fold with each other. And they're not rushing out to bash anyone this time. And it gives the, the the runners nowhere to go. And they have to run an overs line to try and get away from the rook. The collisions are good. And the rook control is better. They were in a little bit more control there. The line is good again. The collision is good again. And this time they're not jumping off the opposition like they are on fire. It is still quick. Don't get me wrong. There are still problems with some of their tackle techniques. But as a rule... This is a lot better from PNG. I'm not saying this happened throughout the game, but just to see it like this for a moment early in the game was enough to make me think that they'd done some work on this in the week and had taken that on board because at the end of the day, they did end up winning this game. And as you can see, Mackay didn't get very far with that set at all. Let's look at PNG now coming out of their own half. And what's going to strike you now is the way they run onto the ball. There is very few teams, if any, in the rugby league world who run the ball with as much uh, ver ferocity as this PNG team. They really take everything into every carry. I love this carry here in the, the way he went to the line with a support runner. So you'll often hear coaches talk about running in twos. This was actually in threes. The ball runner is nice and wide of the rook, so the markers don't get near him. He gets the ball quite close to the advantage line, but he's got a left side support and a right side support. And what that does is it keeps the defenders on their heels. Because if you go to the line with numbers, the defence can't commit to you just in case you do a tip on or move the ball somewhere else. So excellent stuff from PNG there. It gets great go forward gets a quick play the ball. It's like a role reversal. This is like what Burley did to, to PNG last time we analysed the tape and PNG have started this game, going like the clappers quite early. And what's what's really good here about the seven, um, and I'm just going to rewind it that to that play, the seven takes the ball on the advantage line. The ball does the work. It's a nice long pass. He's got inside support, but number seven is taking the ball square. And because he's square, he's a threat to the defensive line. So this defender has to turn in. He can't leave him and slide. And it brings this inside attacker into play and also this defender into play. And it means now very early in the game, the seven is a running threat. Because look at the clock. There's only one minute 35 gone. I've actually flipped the two sets around. The defensive set you saw was actually after this. But look, they've just gone a good solid 75 metres. Didn't end great. So that led me to look at other issues. How were the ending sets? Well, look, there's a try they scored straight from a scrum. And then I was thinking they've got to use that fullback as much as they can um, and bring him into play as much as they can. So let's see if they kept on with this quality of exit set. This is in the 12th minute now, and they're still only 6-0 up. They've decided to sneak down the short side here and, again, playing decent football. They're on the front foot. They've got bodies around the ball. They've got bodies in motion. They're still running with gusto. They're playing it quickly quite often. A Mackay defender isn't back at marker. But this is hard to sustain for a full game, to be fair. But what 
is very good from PNG is how clinical they are in this early stage of the game. And I think this is the period that won them the game, if I'm if I'm quite frank. Look how many metres they are making. They're not taking any undue risks. Even that play there, it was a front and a back man option. Now, you do know that I am uh, vehemently against the obsession with the front man. And I am going to be a little bit critical now because they've gone to the front man here. If they'd have gone back man and over here, they've had, they'd have had an overlap. But instead, they just go front man and two into the defensive line. Um, but it's hard to criticise when they're making so many metres in this scenario. Here's seven again going straight to the line. It's still a threat. So now the Mackay defenders are thinking that the number seven is going to go to the line at any point. And that's exactly where you want the defence to be. Now, what I'd like, though, to see PNG do is from a scenario like this, because the set has been restarted. It's on the second tackle again. From that play the ball, they've got to move the ball. Instead, they go straight to the sticks, basically. And it allows the Mackay defence to readjust and to resettle into position. So I would have liked something a bit more clinical there. But here we have a bit of width. Now we're starting to see a little bit of a chink in the PNG attacking armour. So, um, first of all, they scored. So you're probably thinking, what you want about Lee? Well, imagine they'd have shifted on this play that I picked out earlier. They'd have probably scored quite easily and maybe walked the ball back a bit more towards the, six, the sticks, number one, because they've allowed the Mackay defence to readjust and move up the screen. So they're set and ready to go. Now, with this set here, the pass has gone behind the number six. And look how flat number one is and look how flat the lead runner is. So this ha this try happened in spite of their um, structure, if you like, rather than because of their structure. I don't know if you could even argue that was an obstruction. I'm not completely sure what the obstruction rules are these days, but um, they'd, they'd certainly look at that in the NRL. Um, here we have some more attacking shape. Look, again, I can't criticise the fact that six and seven are going to the line, but sometimes it seems they're going to the line because their support runners aren't in the right spot. That's not too bad, but with a lead runner, you, I'd like him to engage the inside shoulder of the outside defender, the outside shoulder of the inside defender, and try and suck them in before hitting a hole uh, on an unders line. And this back man, for me, is far too flat all the time. Sometimes this happens in lower grade teams because they expect the passes to be quicker and sharper, but sometimes they're not. And sometimes when players have had different levels of, of play and experience, this can happen. As you know, I don't always talk about personnel or very rarely talk about personnel, but I think that the, the the half there went to the line number six because he could not see one clearly. But even so, there's no criticism for his ability to go to the line. I have noticed the PNG catching the balls behind them a little bit here. So number 13 reaching back to grab the ball. So that would suggest to me they're a little bit too flat in attack. And the passes are going backwards, so they have to reach back for them. So that's something to adjust. It almost seems as if they're shocked by the amount of go forward they're getting, actually. Um, and this extra play they have into the middle is just giving Mackay a chance to line their defence up better. A better team than Mackay would have probably defended, have defended the last try. Here, they're totally in control of the scenario. Um, I don't even think the Mackay defender had to jump out there, but he did, and he did he did a good job in in stopping the try being scored. Um, your guess as good as mine is why that wasn't given a knock on. But um, I do feel PNG are taking one too many plays in. Like I'm okay with this as a settler now, but now they've got to shift to the other side of the field or shift to the the short side again. They can't keep playing into the hands of the opposition. And that's what they're doing just by turning the ball back inside. They're just running at the same men all the time and they're comfortably dealing with it, to be quite frank. So I'd like PNG to have a little bit more external vision the next time I see them play. Um, looking out wide, looking at the last three defenders on each side of the field 
rather than trying to play in that middle chunk, which they're doing a fair bit of here. But in terms of effort and in terms of endeavour, this has been excellent from PNG. I have called for wider runs and look at the damage number one did there. Look at that. So seven's nice and deep. 12's nice and flat, which engages these defenders. He runs a good, what ends up being a decoy line, but one's nice and deep this time. And really what he needs to do is, is try and hook this defender in and try and put four through the hole. All easy to say afterwards, but he actually does an all right job here um, of getting his own way out of that little hole that he tried to run into but couldn't make it. So, And he didn't give away an obstruction. So that was a glimpse there of what can happen with the right structures. There is a little bit of a concern to the way PNG uh, finished the sets with the kicks. Because they were so physical in defence the other day, they did cough up some ball, Mackay, because PNG knocked it out of their grasp. Again, probably one too many settlers there for PNG. I'll tell you why I'm saying this, because if you have a look at this play the ball, so that play the ball there, and we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight Mackay defenders in the screen. So if that was a half and they got those attackers to bite with some decoy running here and the ball was shifted, you've only got five defenders somewhere else. One of them will be the fullback, which means you've only got four defenders from below my cursor here. And I think, perspective or not, we know that's not halfway across the field. Mackay are at sixes and sevens in their defensive line there. Um, sixes and sevens is probably not the right term. We should probably call it fours and sixes or <laughs> because of the 10 men that are in the defensive line. And that's what I talk about when I talk about the defensive split. So I would say that Papua New Guinea needs some work in this next week on not taking too many plays into the line and their shapes and their depth of shapes. That's a lot better too. That little bit deeper and look at where they ended up. But it's a combination thing now. That, so... <sighs> That's perfect. The ball does the work. The seven, it skips out outside a couple of defenders. So he's getting to these defenders rather than the, these defenders up here. Number 12, his timing has been perfect. Number one is better on this side with his timing because he gets it perfect. He comes in to engage these two defenders here. Number four probably could be a little bit wider. He could be near this line here and he might have just strolled straight over. But because he's going into out, he ends up running overs a little bit. And what should have happened happened here is number five has overrun it a little bit. He, if he was a bit deeper, it'd have been an opportunity to be past the ball and go in the corner. But from this position, he needs to go back inside to uh, receive the offload. He's a bit late on it and it's a little bit scrappy. But you can see here, can't you, why PNG won this game. They're, they're running with a lot more uh, uh, power and uh, invective than they did a week ago. It's just the shapes now. It's just the timing. It's just the combinations getting them spot on. I don't know how many people have changed uh, uh, position or have come into the team or out of the team. You may have noticed that set there didn't end very well. So they obviously need to brush up on some attacking uh, combinations, some attacking prowess if you like defense it's got to be like what we saw in that clip where they controlled keep the line control the rook and whatnot that was 100 percent better than last week but we're still with about 40 percent improvement in them take care guys